In this video, I'm going to be showing you four techniques used by professionals to create smooth animations. But these tips are not exclusive to a certain software, so even if you're not using DaVinci Resolve like me, I'd encourage you to follow along and learn all the techniques, which is the most important part. Now, without wasting any more of your time, let's get into the video. So the first technique is frame rate, and it's important to understand that all of these techniques will build on each other, so you need to make sure you understand each one. So frame rate is very important, and the reason that it is, is if you don't have enough FPS, your video is going to look jerky. It's not going to have the fluid motion that motion graphics are supposed to have, and instead it's going to look more like stop motion. Whenever I film videos with my camera, I like to shoot in 24 FPS. That's like the standard for cinematic production. But whenever I'm doing motion graphics, I like to use 30 FPS, which is going to give you a smoother look. In the end, it comes down to personal preference, but most of the time I would use 30 FPS or 60 FPS. Now, inside of DaVinci Resolve, we can change our frame rate really easy. In a brand new project, all you have to do is go up to File, come down to Settings, and now, as you can see, you can change your frame rate. By default, it's always set to 24, so let's just change this over to 30 FPS. Then you can click Save, and it's done. But something else that is really important is giving this video a like and dropping a comment down below. Okay, on the animation length, the animation length is going to heavily rely on the frame rate that you chose. Let's say you animate something in 30 FPS and then move it over to 60 FPS. Everything is going to look twice as fast, even though the animation lasts for the same amount of frames. Finding the perfect length for your animation can be a little bit tricky, and it's going to be different in every single situation. When you're working in DaVinci Resolve Fusion, let me show you an easy way to do that. All you need to do is select the node that has the keyframes. Then you need to go up to the keyframes editor and then hit the little drop down here. And you can see all the keyframes that are inside of this node. The nice thing about the keyframes editor is I can adjust the position of the keyframes without actually moving their value. For example, I can grab this final keyframe and drag it out to let's say 60 frames or around there. And it's gonna slow the animation down. But if I drag it to the left, it's gonna speed the animation up. This is a really awesome tool that allows you to precisely move your keyframes without actually having to remake them. Okay, on to number three, easing. Think of driving a car. It doesn't instantly start going 60 miles per hour and then instantly go down to zero miles an hour when you want to stop. If it did, that would be pretty bad. That's what easing does. It takes a linear animation and applies a curve to it to make it look a little bit more smooth and natural. Now animation curves can be very difficult to get looking right. And in just a bit, I'm gonna tell you of an awesome plugin for DaVinci Resolve that makes it super easy. But if you wanna do it natively inside of DaVinci Resolve, you'll need to use the spline editor. So if you go up to the spline editor, as you can see, it visualizes the animation on a 2D graph. You can see the frames going across the top here and then the value of the keyframe on uh, vertical. To actually add some easing, what you can do is select all the keyframes and then use a couple of different keyboard shortcuts. First up, you can use F to flatten out the keyframes. You can also use S and that'll smooth out the keyframes. And finally, you can use Shift L and that'll put it back to linear. And if you wanna make your own custom curves, what you can do is just grab any of these points here and move it around. And as you can see, you're making your own custom curve that'll play back. Another very helpful tool is, like, let's say if I select two of these keyframes, I can hit T on my keyboard and I can precisely adjust the ease amount. I can do that just by dragging these values up here or I can lock it so that changes in unison. One other really cool way to animate is by selecting your keyframes, right clicking and then going to ease and then hitting dialog. From here you can change from a couple of different easing presets and then it'll visualize the curve for you. You can zoom out if you want to be able to see it all. But that's not all. You can also change the in and out by dragging these uh, sliders down here at the bottom. So I can change the out and then with the in, it adjusts how far up it goes on this outback cubic. If I hit okay, now when I play it, it'll pop up and then slowly go back into place. So that is a very powerful tool. But there is an even easier way to do this, and that is using an awesome plugin called Motion Pal, which I've been using for almost a year now. It allows you to make custom animations and then apply pre-made ease effects using an awesome template browser. All you need to do is hit Browse Curves and select from any of these ease presets. I could have it do an elastic animation. I could have it do a bounce animation. And you can see you can change it with just a click of a button, which is awesome. Another really cool thing is you can make custom curves. You can do that by coming up here and hitting the custom curve checkbox. And now you can use all the controls that I just showed you before. You can move around in this window, you can select all the keyframes, you can hit F on your keyboard, and you can even hit T and open up this easing menu to do some really cool effects. And just like that, I've created my own custom easing curve in Motion Pal. And the other really cool thing about this is you can easily adjust the animation values. For example, I could bring the start value up to 3 and have it scale down. That was so easy, it was just one little slider. And if I want to tweak it a little bit, I can do that on the fly. 
It is so cool. In my opinion, this is a must have for professionals and beginners. It saves you a ton of time while making your job a lot easier. If you were interested, check out the link down below and use code JakeWhip for 10% off at checkout. LearningNowFX also has a wide variety of other plugins on their website, some of my favorites being LensMaster, Flares, and AccuShader. To learn more about all those, check out the link below. Okay, but on to the final technique, and that is motion blur. You can have the perfect ease values, the perfect animation length, and the perfect frame rate, but your animation is still missing something. Most of the time, that's motion blur. To enable motion blur, all you need to do is go over to the settings tab of any node with animations. Then just check motion blur, and then you can adjust all of its settings. I usually set my quality to around 10 to 30 in 99% of projects. Now I have a dedicated video talking about motion blur, which you should check out down below. Motion blur can be really slow, and that'll give you a few tips on how to speed that up inside of Fusion. If you guys want to check that out, it'll be linked right over here. But thank you guys for watching this video. If you guys want to see some more motion graphics content, check out my motion graphics playlist. And you can also check out my motion graphics plugin for DaVinci Resolve. With that being said, I'll see you guys next time for another video.